Welcome to Install and Overview, a module of the Wavelink eLearning training course on Velocity, and specifically the Velocity console. Each time you want to move to the next slide, click anywhere on the slide to continue, or click on the forward arrow shown here. The console installation module will walk through the installation of the Velocity console. Next, we'll take a look at a Velocity project. A project is what is deployed down to the Velocity client. After that, we will do an overview of the Velocity Console's four sections. And last, we will show how an uninstall of the console looks. In order to install Velocity Console, certain core requirements must be met. The console requires the Windows operating system and supports Windows 7, 8, and 10, as well as Windows 2008 and 2012 server. Windows XP is not supported. A version of the .NET framework that is 4.5 and above is also required. A .NET install requires Windows 7 Service Pack 1, Windows 8, or Windows 10. It can also be installed on Windows Server 2008 R2 Service Pack 1 or Windows Server 2012. The last requirement is that the projects you build with the Velocity Console need to be deployed down to the smart devices. It is important that there is a plan in place to make deployment as simple and easy as possible. At a minimum, some connection needs to exist for a device to use as a testing platform. Now let's step through a normal installation process for the Velocity console. First, you can download the console from the Wavelink Downloads page. From www.wavelink.com, just go to Downloads and Free Tools, and on the right side drop-down menu, select Velocity. Then select the Velocity console download. When ready, execute the installation file. When the installation file executes, the install will check the system. It was stated earlier that the .NET framework of 4.5 or greater is needed. If the system has not been updated, then the installation will splash an error screen about the need to install the .NET framework. Click on OK. The installation will notify the user that the setup was ended. Click on Finish. Download at a minimum .NET Framework version 4.5. Install the update and try the Velocity install again. Once all the system requirements have been met, we can start the installation of the Velocity console. Click on Next. Read the End User License Agreement. If you accept the terms, Check the I accept the terms of the license agreement box and then click on next. Click install when ready to launch. If this is the first time installing the Velocity console, you will need to install the Visual C++ Runtime 2012 libraries on the system. The install is baked into the console install, so all that is needed is for you to check I agree to the license term and conditions box and then click install. When the Visual C++ Runtime 2012 install is finished, click on Close. If the runtime libraries do not load successfully, the Velocity Console installation will close itself down. As the install runs, the progress will be tracked. In the event of installation failure, the install application will notify the user and with a click on the Finish button, the install will stop and the Velocity Console files will not be installed. In most cases, the install will load successfully. Please make sure the Launch Velocity Console button is checked and click on Finish. The Velocity Console will appear on the screen. One of the ways of configuring the Velocity Client is through a Velocity Console project. A project contains all custom keyboards, custom themes and stylized elements, host profile details, and more. Prior to creating each of these custom features for your terminal, you must first create a project and associate it with a host profile. Projects are displayed in the Velocity Console initial screen. You can create projects by clicking on the New Projects button. You can edit a project by clicking on the Define Project in the Velocity Console initial screen. You can save a project by clicking on the Save key and you can delete a project by clicking on the X in the upper right hand corner of the defined project. When you initially launch the Velocity Console application, you're given the option of creating a new project or opening a current one, if any exist. 
To create a new project, click on the New Project button at the top right corner of the screen. A project name is a required field. Enter a project name. A company name is an optional field, and it helps tie the project together. Enter the company name if desired. Click on Done. The project opens and is available for editing. Remember to save your project if you do not want to lose any of your work. All tasks associating with creating and editing projects are done through the Velocity Console interface. The application allows you to create custom keyboards with the unique layouts and key values, associate specific host profiles with an application, set up customized HTML and CSS templates for individual themes, and import and translate screen captures into HTML. Once a project is ready for use, you can deploy the project to a .wldep file and distribute it manually or via mobile device management software to devices containing the Velocity Client. To start the Velocity Client, go to the Windows Start bar and do a search for Velocity Console or click on the Start icon created during the installation. The Velocity interface appears. Let's break down the Velocity Console into four sections. The first is the back key. This closes your existing project and returns you to the initial launch screen, displaying all existing projects you have stored. Prior to exiting the project, the application will prompt you to save, even if no changes have been made to the open project. Next is the project details. This shows the current project's name and company. After that is the project menu. This offers a list of icons for screens and options you can use to create, edit, and distribute a project. Each of the menu items are defined later in the module. The last is the project workspace. This is where you will perform tasks associated with managing a project. All options associated with the selected menu item display here. When you navigate to another screen, any changes you make in the workspace are automatically saved. We will look at the two most important Velocity Project menu options first. The Host button sends the user to the Host Profile screen within the project. The Host Profile screen is the default screen that displays when you create a project or come in to edit a project. A Host Profile defines the settings that the Velocity client should use when attempting to initiate a connection. The host profile must include the emulation type, IP address of the host, and the host port. It will most likely hold other configuration settings as well. You may configure an unlimited number of host profiles on the Velocity client, but only one host profile is allowed per project when using the Velocity console. The second important option is the Save button. The Save button preserves the most recent changes to your Velocity project. Clicking on this button automatically saves the project. Please note, the Velocity Console application retains all changes to a project each time you navigate to a new screen within the project, but you still must manually click the Save button to keep all changes if you exit the application or close the project. The Velocity Client is able to enhance the user interface experience through its built-in HTML and CSS rendering engine. With this functionality, you can import your existing screens to a project in the Velocity Console and apply styled themes or edit individual screen elements for a more modern appearance to your host application screens. Using the Screens button, you can use the workspace to import .wltsc screens and edit the HTML theme to create a unique and more modern appearance for your users on the Velocity Client. Custom keyboards are created, edited, and exported as part of a project. With the Keyboards button, you can enter a workspace that allows for the creation of one or more custom keyboards with unique layouts and keys for use within your Velocity client. Any keyboard defined in the project is available for use by the host profile based on the project configuration. Settings define how the Velocity client behaves when connected to a host profile. The Settings button allows you to set universal themes for each element type. These screens present each element type users will encounter on the Velocity Client. 
Theme elements can be set globally so all imported screens contain those elements will be automatically formatted according to the configuration you specify. Element formatting on a screen-by-screen -screen basis is also available but is performed in the Screens tab rather than the Settings tab. The first three options of the Velocity Project menu allow you to manipulate projects that have been created, designed, and saved. You can import and export an entire project or parts of it from the Velocity console and integrate them into other projects as needed. You can deploy projects down to a smart device. Here's a description of each project save method. Import. You can import all parts of another exported project into your current project. Files that are imported are previously exported from the Velocity client and are stored as .zip files. Export. You can export all or part of your project for backups and or to import into another project. Files when exported are stored as .zip files. Deploy. Deploy packages are files that are stored with a WLDEP extension and are the files that hold all the project details. These files are delivered to a smart device manually or using an MDM. The console uninstall follows normal Windows protocol for deletion of an application. Bring up the control panel and select program and features or just select uninstall from the list of items. From the list of applications, select Velocity Console. Right click and choose Uninstall or select Uninstall from the menu. If asked, confirm deletion of the console. The console has now been removed. Thank you for listening to Install an Overview, a module of the Wavelink eLearning training course on Velocity and specifically the Velocity Console. You are now ready to move to the next module. Wavelink is a wholly owned subsidiary of the Landis Corporation. It has offices around the world, so there will always be a convenient office near you. If you would like any more information, please contact your Wavelink sales representative or email us at the address sales at wavelink.com.